we appreciate everyone showing up. Um, and just want to start with uh, just a brief presentation overview um, about why we oppose Measure A as the Boca County Growers Alliance. Um, so want to definitely take time. People have questions afterwards um, or thoughts, but just want to start with just a general overview of, of what the measure is and why we have concerns about it. Um, so Measure A um, is a 38-page ballot measure. Um, as probably most folks know, it's going to be on our March 5th ballot, and everyone has their ballots if, if you vote by mail as well. Um, and really, the opposition to Measure A has been pretty substantial from a pretty diverse coalition within the county. So um, it's been opposed by the Democratic, Republican, and Green parties. Um, it's been opposed by the three supervisors who are running in this election, um, Mike Wilson, Michelle Bushnell, and Rex Bone. Um, but not only that, it's been opposed by all of their opponents as well. Um, at this point, each and every one of them, I think there's six people running against those three candidates, and they all also oppose Measure A. Um, it's been opposed by the sheriff and uh, the Humboldt Deputy Sheriff's Organization, um, local and tribal governments, Eureka, Arcata, Rio Dell, Yurok Tribal Council, and Trinidad Rancheria. Um, of course, cannabis farmers oppose it, um, but also the food farmers, uh, North Coast Growers Association, who put on our farmers markets are in opposition. Um, and there's many other groups which are opposed to Measure A, um, which we'll talk about more sort of as this goes on. Um, and one of the questions I, I want to answer in this time is why is there such strong opposition to Measure A and why does it sort of cut across partisan lines where usually we're falling on left versus right or very familiar types of political lines? Um, so starting with just some local context about how we got here. Um, so before we had regulated cannabis in California or in Humboldt County, there were an estimated 15,000 cultivation sites in the county. Um, and when cannabis was legalized in California um, under Proposition 64, and there was a process in Humboldt County to build an ordinance to allow that to happen, um, there was a really, really extensive and long public process that included over a dozen public meetings um, with basically all of the stakeholders within the county being part of that process. So there were farmers, there were environmental groups, there was law enforcement, tribes, local and state regulators, state agencies, um, all involved to build the two ordinances that we have today. So in 2016 and 2018, there were two different land use ordinances that were implemented. Um, and really the goal of them was to try to um, deal with the challenges of the green rush and try to have a legal market, which was gonna be viable for farmers to participate in, um, that was gonna be protective of the environment, that was gonna be protective of neighborhoods. And so now six years later, um, the amount of cultivation in the county has dropped dramatically. So from those 15,000 cultivation sites in 2015, um, there's now about 1,000 permitted farms in the county. Um, and they collectively total 335 acres, which for uh, context is about 0 0.52 square miles. Um, it is a very, very small percentage um, of Humboldt County's land mass or whatever measure you would want to use to think about the size of that. Um, it's an incredibly small amount of total cultivation area in the county. And the farmers who are permitted are overwhelmingly small farmers. So 60% are under 10,000 square feet, uh, which is about a quarter acre, um, and 98% are under an acre in size. Um, so today, um, that's kind of where we're at after all of this uh, work was done. And these farmers follow, and we can talk about a more extremely stringent environmental regulations um, and other types of regulations on their activities. So entering into the conversation about two years ago is Measure A. And Measure A um, is, uh, was brought forward by a small community group in the Neeland area um, who had concerns about cannabis cultivation in their neighborhood. And they hired an attorney out of San Francisco and wrote what became Measure A, um, which essentially is, is a measure that completely overhauls the cannabis rules and regulations in the county. So it's sometimes been discussed or described as a very simple measure or a very short measure. In fact, the measure is 38 pages. It's tremendously detailed. And um, a primary thing that it does is add new and extensive sections to the Humboldt County general plan that require basically a full rewrite of Humboldt's cannabis ordinances. The general plan is the constitution for land use in the county. So when you amend the constitution, everything else in the county has to be amended to be consistent with it. So we have 143 pages of existing cannabis ordinances in the county um, that would need to be rewritten if Measure A were passed. And I think what is important to say about um, the 38 pages of Measure A is that unlike our current ordinances, they didn't go through this process of public collaboration and public review. Um, the 38 pages were never released to the public before they were submitted in their final form to the Office of Elections. Um, the proponents have discussed they didn't talk to people. I, I think they did talk to people. 
Um, but from my perspective, it's very different to then write a 38 page legally binding document in the same way that you wouldn't sign a 38 page contract without reading it just based on someone telling you that it was trying to do a certain thing. In the same way, this is a 38 page legal document and that document itself wasn't discussed with, made available for those same environmental groups and regulators and farmers to be able to comment on. So what we've seen over the past uh, couple of years since this has become public is that really the list of opposition uh, to Measure A has, has really grown uh, to really incredible proportions. And I think it's symptomatic of the lack of process which led to the measure's creation if there is buy-in the, on the front end from any of these groups, of course, they wouldn't be opposed now. But really across the spectrum, we're seeing this opposition, I think, because that collaborative process was not part of the creation of the measure. So that sort of gets to the question of what is it in the measure that is so concerning? Um, so the Humboldt uh, County Planning Department um, put out an analysis of Measure A. Um, and their bottom line conclusion is that uh, the H what was called the HCRI, Humboldt County Re Cannabis Reform Initiative, now Measure A, you see, can see in the first quote, would make compliance so difficult the legal market is rendered not viable in Humboldt County. And really, there's a lot of reasons why, and the, the report is 27 pages long, but I think the second quote really captures what I think is like the most critical reason, if I were just to isolate one, <clears throat> which is that the way the initiative is structured, it's not trying to just prevent new permits or new large permits. It's really structured in a way that prevents modifications to permits by farmers, period. Regardless of size, regardless of the reason for modifying the permit, um, it, it really tries to freeze every farm in the county in place permanently. And that was really the major finding of uh, the planning department report. And I think it's one of the most significant issues with the initiative. So the reason why the planning department report concluded this. There's a number of different reasons, but th this is really like the, the most critical one that I would point to if I were just gonna point to one. So the initiative is really focused on preventing what it calls the expansion of cannabis farms. And you can see in the press, the proponents talking about this as well, they are really interested in preventing expansion. So I think it's really, really important to take a very, very close look at how the initiative defines expansion because it specifically defines that term on pages seven and eight. And it says that examples of expanded uses include, but are not limited to, so it's actually broader than what I'm about to read. They include, but are not limited to an increase in cultivation area, water usage, energy usage, or the number or size of any structures used in connection with cultivation. So expansion does not just mean more cultivation area. It means anything that increases your water usage, anything that increases your energy usage, anything that increases the number or size of any structure used in connection with cultivation. So this is why, this is one of the reasons why the planning department report concludes that Measure A is written to prevent modifications to a permit. Because anything you wanna do basically on a, a permitted cannabis farm of any size, you're gonna run into one of these issues. If you wanna build a new drying shed, um, if you want to build um, you know, a building that you're able to trim in, if you wanna bring more uh, infrastructure on farm for public accommodations, for tourism, um, if you wanna bring uh, more transportation or distribution on farm, and if you want to build water storage or solar, which are structures, all of those are pretty clearly covered under this definition of expansion. So that's the set of activities that are essentially frozen in place by this initiative. And it applies to every farm in the county, existing or new, and regardless of size. So the other claim that's been made by proponents is that uh, Measure A is an environmental initiative. And if you look at our environmental groups in the county, um, most of them are not endorsing. Um, and there is a independent environmental analysis that's been published by uh, the group Cannabis for Conservation, uh, which is a 501c4, I believe, um, that receives funding from Fish and Wildlife to implement conservation products on cannabis farms. And what they point out is that the initiative um, is not informed by a scientific or evidence-based process. Um, and I think even more significantly was not created based on input by the environmental regulators who create the current very stringent rules for cannabis. So you would think for an environmental initiative, you would want to bring in Department of Fish and Wildlife and the Water Board, other environmental groups within the county, and you would expect their support for an environmental initiative. And in fact, those groups were not brought into the development of the initiative, um, nor are they supportive of the initiative. Um, this is the study that came out actually just this week. Um, that I think is really relevant, again, for this claim that Measure A is an environmental initiative. Um, it's from researchers at, at UC Berkeley uh, Cannabis Research Center who have been studying cannabis and the environment since 2015. Um, and they summarized their research um, in this brief, which was released. And essentially what they conclude within that brief is that um, 
cannabis farms that are legal are incredibly highly regulated for water usage, for environmental impact, unlike other types of farms are not required to, are rather required to not divert water during the dry summer months um, and have water storage. And so they conclude that really the most important thing we can do for environmental impact is to incentivize farms to be in and stay in the licensed market. And I think it's really important to say Measure A does nothing about farms which are not in the licensed market, which historically are those farms which in particular UC Berkeley has pointed to as causing uh, the most amount of environmental harm. It only targets legal licensed farms who are already abiding by really extensive regulation from the Water, water Board, Fish and Wildlife, Department of Pesticide Regulation, the county, um, and more regulators uh, that really regulate for environmental impact. I think it's also worth saying um, the initiative at times has been promoted as supportive of small farmers. And I think it's really important to say um, the initiative doesn't just cap the size of cultivation. It just doesn't just freeze expansion. It also sets the allowable number of cultivation permits in Humboldt County below current levels. And what that means is that if you want to go legal, if you want to be a small farmer, even if you're extremely small, 2,000 square feet, this initiative does not enable you to do that because it sets the cap for permits below current levels. So no matter how small you are, no matter how environmentally sustainable you are, even if you believe the initiative has all these great protections or whatever, essentially it's, it's shutting the door on everyone, no matter how environmentally friendly or how small that farmer might be. Um, there's much more than this, but I'll, I'll spare everyone the, all of the details. Um, I think it's worth saying um, that uh, there is a section in here that amends the general plan of Humboldt County uh, and says that all new or existing farms over 10,000 square feet are inherently destructive to the environment and community. Um, I don't think that's true. Um, I've actually asked the proponents if that's true, and, and they've said they don't think it's true. Um, but it's what's in the initiative, and, and not just in the initiative, actually in the general plan, the Constitution for Land Use in the County. So I, I think it's another um, part that's indicative of sort of um, what I would consider to be something that's really trying to be maximally restrictive of cannabis generally, without real consideration to the specifics of what it is that, that we're talking about. Um, another uh, you know, thing which is worth mentioning, um, the initiative prohibits the annual renewal of the permit if there's any outstanding complaint against a cannabis farm, which has not been investigated by the county at the time of permit renewal. So permits have to be renewed annually. If there's a complaint against your farm that has not been investigated by the county, it cannot be renewed. So it doesn't say that the complaint has to have any basis. It doesn't say there has to be any due process for the complaint. It just says if the complaint has not been investigated, the permit cannot be renewed. And if the permit can't be renewed, you can't legally cultivate. And if you can't legally cultivate, you are illegally cultivating cannabis, which is not, uh, which is frowned upon in the state of California and in the county. Um, I think I'll, I'll just sort of end with this. I, I think there's sort of an overarching question here. We have 621,000 acres of non-cannabis cultivation in the county. Um, we have many land uses in the county that have a land use impact. Residential uses have a land use impact. They have an energy impact. They have a water impact. Agricultural uses, industrial uses, all of these uses have an impact on the environment, on neighborhoods. They, as individuals, we all use energy. Compared to the 621,000 acres of non-cannabis agriculture in Humboldt, there are 335 acres of cannabis cultivation. This initiative is exclusively and only focused on cannabis cultivation. So from my perspective, if you were trying to write an environmental initiative or an initiative about water or an initiative about impact to neighborhoods, you would be interested in all land uses. And I think a critical question that I, I've never heard a clear answer from the proponents from is, why is this specific land use necessary to put this level of micromanagement on when there are many other land uses that all have an impact and that we all need to think about collectively, I think, if we want to have reasonable regulations. Um, so I'll just leave uh, with this slide um, of the opposition to Measure A. Um, I think it's worth saying, um, as a voter initiative, we're humble to pass this initiative. It is basically cannot be changed without a voter initiative, except for very few small sections. Um, and so I, I think if Humboldt moves forward to approve this, it will be a really dramatic mistake. I don't think the county will. Um, but if we choose to, to go down this road, we're pretty much going to be locked into it. Um, and it's going to be very, very difficult to reverse. So I think it's really important that we keep the ability to have collaborative public conversations about what we want to do with our cannabis ordinances. They're not perfect. Nobody thinks they're perfect. Certainly farmers don't think they're perfect. We need to be able to improve and adapt them over time. Um, and from our perspective, this is not the solution uh, that is going to really help anyone within the county. So appreciate uh, the opportunity to speak and happy to take any questions if people have them.
Uh, a lot of familiar faces, but give the opportunity to the community to ask questions directly to Ross or any of us up here. If you guys have any questions or anyone on Zoom. See the chat. Um, we've got uh, Basho saying mostly just want some bullet points to answer community concerns should the topics arise in our wanderings. And then thanks for that presentation. So that's on. <laughs> I just wanted uh, some clarification in terms of, so this pertains specifically to cultivation, but not post cultivation, such as production and manufacturing, or does it pertain to that as well? So I, I, think it, I think there's different ways to answer the question. So cultivation is defined within the initiative um, as inclusive of trimming, processing, nursery. Um, so anything that's covered under nursery to processing is definitely included. And then that phrase, uh, in the definition of expansion, uh, structures used in connection with cultivation. Um, and you can also see actually in the first sentence here, expanded when used to describe commercial cannabis cultivation sites, uses, operations, activities, or applications. So I think there is a pretty clear reading of this that really anything that happens on like a place where there's cultivation, even if it's not a cultivation activity, kind of gets looped into this. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it, so what about like other processing facilities or, you know, other other legalized cannabis businesses that are not about cultivation? Um, manufacturing. Sure, manufacturing. So there, there's a couple different answers, I think. One is if you're trying to get a new nursery or processing permit anywhere in the county, effectively, I don't think that opportunity is going to be available. Those things are considered cultivation legally. So those things are, are gonna be shut down. Um, for anything else, there's a provision in the initiative that I didn't talk about here that prohibits holding multiple permits uh, for a single person. Um, and the proponents really think that that means cultivation permits. It says multiple permits, not multiple cultivation permits. Their attorney has written a very long memos, I'm sure they paid him a lot of money for, that say that's only cultivation permits, it's not all permits. I think it's legitimately unclear. Um, but it's possible there's also impacts on manufacturing and distribution and retail because of that section. Jeff on Jeff. Zoom. Can you hear us, Jeff? Yeah, can you hear me? Loud and clear. I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. I see your hands raised. You got a question? All right, beautiful. No, I just wanted to add. Um, I've gone over this initiative probably a hundred times. And uh, one thing that stands out to me is, although forbearance on streams, creeks, diversions is a great idea. We're all worried about water. One thing this initiative does, it's going to restrict, it's going to limit the time that a farm can pull from any diversion, any surface diversion. What that's going to do is make that farm pull more water at a faster rate to make up for the time loss, which is gonna adversely affect that portion of that diversion, meaning that stream, creek, river. So really on the face of it, it is bad. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> Any further questions? You guys are all pretty well versed. Appreciate you.